Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship with the Hampton United Methodist Church. I'm Robbie Stevens, and I'm going to do my best with some laryngitis here today. Um, but I welcome you, as well as those that will be joining us on Facebook and through um, the recording that we have on the radio. For God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Please join me in our call to worship. We worship because the Lord stood by us on difficult days. Even when we weren't aware and felt alone. We worship because the Lord gives strength. Even when we feel weak. We worship because we have been rescued again and again. When we are afraid, we are lost. Come and worship the God who stands with us in our darkest days and promises to be with us to the end. We will worship in hope, seeking eyes to see and hearts to believe in God with us. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing our first hymn, number 152, I Sing the Almighty Power of God. Please stand if you are able. join together as we, as we pray together our opening prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness to us in the difficult times. Help each of us to run with perseverance the race that you have set before us and to finish that race well with your help. Help us to keep the faith and the teaching that you have entrusted to us and pass it on faithfully to those in the next generation whose griefs are also. We know you will be with us to the end. We know that your grace is sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Next, we will join together in a responsive reading that is on page 789 in the hymnal, or you'll see it here on your screen from Psalm 65, verses 1 through 8. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. And to you, vows be performed. To you who hear prayer, all flesh shall come because of their sins. You don't have the bold print on the screen, do you? <laughs> I'll say one verse and you say the next one. Okay. 
Blessed are those who you chose and bring near to dwell in your courts. You shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By dread deal deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest sea. And that's not matching what I have either. We're struggling here today. Um, those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. Let's go on and sing a song, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. I want to sing this one twice because it's not very long. Open Our Eyes is in the faith we sing, number 2086. special treat with the choir. Sing well, people. I can't help you today.
Our epistle lesson for today is from 2 Timothy 4. The Apostle Paul writes, As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And so I was rescued even from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing again, number 419, I am thine, O Lord. remain standing for the reading of the gospel from Luke 18, 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, 
God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my income, of all my income, but the tax collector standing far off would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. You may be seated. Thank you, Robbie, and thank you, choir. Uh, what a beautiful song that brings us into that spirit of worship. Our psalms lesson from Psalm 65 says, Praise awaits to you. You are fitting to receive our praise, O Lord God. Psalm 65 goes on and lists many other things. We, we just did like eight verses. I don't know if we did them well, but we did them, right? Eight verses, that is not the entire chapter, and I'm not going to read the entire chapter to you, but I recommend it, um, the Psalms. Second Timothy, the Apostle Paul, who wrote like a third of the New Testament, was a scholar on the Old Testament. Paul was a Pharisee. The Pharisees believed in the entirety of the Old Testament as they knew it at that time. So all the books, including the Psalms. The Apostle Paul quoted the Old Testament over 200 times. The book of Psalms, he quoted at least 36 times. It is the foundation of his faith, the beginning, the beginning. The sermon title today is Keep the Faith. Sometimes we have to stop and ask ourselves, what or who do we have faith in? The Apostle Paul, as we know him, previously had been referred to as Saul. Saul, the keeper of the faith. Saul, persecutor of the church. The church was outside the faith. Saul, the persecutor of the church, the keeper of the faith, the keeper of the word of God, the Old Testament. But, in Psalms 65, he learned praise is fitting unto God. In Psalm 65, he learned that our vows really ought to be fulfilled. In Psalm 65, he learned confession is heard by our God. In Psalm 65, he learned that forgiveness belongs to God. And in Psalms 65, the blessings of God are upon those with a contrite, humble heart. Those that seek Saul, as known previously before that vision on Damascus Road, where he was on a journey to Damascus to defend the faith, to persecute the church. And there on that journey, a bright light, I could use a bright light right now, a bright light came forth from the sky and blinded him, but he looked up when he heard this voice from above saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He looked up, Lord, 
Messiah? Who, who are you? I am Jesus Christ, whom you are persecuting. The rest of the story you probably know, but it helps us to know what it is that we find in the epistle lesson. As the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, keep the faith. Keep the faith. I am being poured out, poured out as a holy offering unto our God, a living sacrifice that's not going to be living very much longer. But Timothy, I have kept the faith. I have fought the fight. And Timothy, the life that I lay down, the example that I leave for all of you, is only an offering to God, is only a witness to you that the call of God is on you. If I be an example to you, let this be an example to you that though God spoke to me, God speaks to you. His church, the very church that I persecuted, it's God's church And I will not deny that now he is my God as well. And I'm happy when the day comes when I leave this life. Because I'll see him. I'll see him. In our gospel lesson, we read this parable and we know that it's a parable because Luke tells us this is a parable. This is a story that can be used as an illustration to present to us an example, a point, something that will help us to live our lives. It could be something similar, like this is like that, so do this and then you'll do that. Or it could just be something with a reasonable explanation of how we should live our lives. I'm amazed that some of the parables in our gospel stories have an explanation And some of the parables, you're just kind of left there hanging as if God's watching and waiting to see if you figure it out. If you figure it out. Is it not written, this shall be called a house of prayer? And Jesus stood outside his house, outside the synagogue, outside the temple. And he told the people there, there were two men that came here to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. And the Pharisee standing by himself was praying. Thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, even like this tax collector. I, I fast twice a week. I give to the poor, I pay my taxes, I'm a pretty good guy, even if I say so myself, and I do, (laughs) I do say so myself. Jesus went on with the story. Well, before he goes on with the story, I'll have to remind you that our scriptures come to us 
after a very long journey. Uh, it comes to us from a different language, a different form of writing. Uh, they say that when it was written, um, it didn't have periods and commas, might not even had um, parentheses or paragraphs. And so sometimes when we read it in the church, we, we rely upon uh, someone else that has written and tried to get as close to that understanding. Um, and I, I'd like to remind you, before I, before I read one verse over again, uh, remind you of you know, the Sadducees that, that really believed in the law. So let's go back and look at just one law from the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Sometimes I know we think that that means you shouldn't cuss or swear. But sometimes I think it means you should not pray for something that God will never allow you to have. God is smarter than that. God is smarter than you. And sometimes like I think this Pharisee, he really wasn't talking to God when he prayed anyway. Forgive me. God, I'm glad I'm not like these other people. Thieves, rogues, adulterers. God, I think myself that I'm not like them. Jesus is telling the story and I wonder is it true or is it just an illustration? But he's not finished yet. I tell you this man not the Pharisee, but this man, the tax collector, who was standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. If this is a true story, I kind of like this ending because Jesus is telling them an important truth of the two men. This man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The gospel lesson is a lesson for all of us. I remind us that of those two men, both of them needed God. Both of them were in bondage. The Pharisee was in bondage to his own self-worth, to his pride, and to his preconceived ideas about the Old Testament, about God, about worship, about prayer, preconceived ideas, dry rituals. But the other, without the rituals, without the law, without maybe much education or knowledge over how to pray, maybe even wondering is there a God up there listening? 
looking down at me. Oh, I've messed up so badly. I don't know who to tell. I don't know who to turn to. My only hope is that there might be a God who hears me. A life changed. There were no names. I wonder if it was a common Hebrew name like Paul or Timothy or Matthew or Mark or Luke or John or maybe a name that I haven't seen in the Bible, a name like Dennis or George. You see, we're not so different than those two men. We, too, are in bondage of some sort. But Jesus was sent to release us from bondage, to show us the way to go, and to forgive our sins, to bless us, and to call us Forth. Like, like Paul in the New Testament in his letter to Timothy says, Timothy, I'm done for. But Timothy, if there's one thing I can leave for you, if I've truly been an example in how to worship, in how to serve, if I've done that for you, then I seem somehow complete. And I know that God will welcome me home because he changed my life that day and I can see that same change in you. Carry on what I've begun. Keep the faith. Search for God. Speak forth your humble confession and be blessed when he hears and sees, holds out his arms and says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I don't believe that Paul passed on without giving that praise of benediction, you know, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that Paul passed on without praying together or leaving that final statement. That final statement, sort of like, well, John Wesley. John Wesley, on his deathbed, he found the strength to look up at those gathered round and say, the best of all is this. God is with us. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever.
gathered worship has ended, but our race goes on. The faith we celebrate in here continues to be the faith that we have to keep out there. As you have poured yourself out in worship, in song, in praise, in prayer, in fellowship, and in unity, now may we go to pour ourselves out in service to the world that God so loves. Let the church, let us be the witness that God is at work in the world. Go with God. Amen. Amen. I'd like to remind you that next Sunday following the worship service will be a catered meal for the congregation on our fifth Sunday tradition. So please keep that in mind. And also there is fellowship downstairs following our worship service today. Let's join together in singing Lead On, O King Eternal, number 580. Lead on. 